Hello and welcome to a tutorial of Autodesk PLM 360. In this tutorial we're going to be covering creating reports and charts. So as a review, reports can show up on the dashboard and if we want we can take a look at a few reports that I have up here on my dashboard but how we achieve these and how we actually create these is what this tutorial is all about. To begin the report creation process, we'll come up to the top and select on reports. Reports are generated per workspace. So the first thing to do is choose the workspace that we would like to report against. For this example, we're going to report across items and bill of materials. Next step, we'll select go. During the report creation process, in this window, we're going to work from top to bottom filling in data and choosing the fields that we want to report on. First thing, let's give it a proper name and decide since we're inside of the items and bill of materials workspace, let's report on all items and their categories. So let's give it a name. We'll call this items by category. A report description is also nice to help people downstream understand what this report is about. Over here where it says limit results, we don't want to actually limit the results so we'll leave this unlimited and regarding report access I can make this a private report just for me and I'm the only person that sees it. I can make it a public report across the entire tenant or site or I can be very specific and share re the report with certain other groups within my company or I can pick and choose people. In this case I'm just going to make it a public report. Next in order to get that nice 3D chart and report that we saw before we are going to enable grouping and the group that I'm going to go after is the item category. Next since we ultimately want to count I'm going to come down to display columns and choose count. We've already got item category over here on the right but in this case I want the item category count. I actually want to get a roll up the count of all of the items and their categories. Also available is detail that are on other tabs within the workspace, the owner and change summary, any attachments, where you use sourcing, life cycle, and etc. So coming down to the next section, we have an option to create a filter. In this case, if I'm going to run a report on items by category, I want to make sure that the latest version is true. So I'll select that, make sure that we are picking up the latest and greatest. Next in our report we'll address the sort order. In this case I want to sort ascending and I'll just choose the radio button over here. Next we'll choose the chart type. The chart type that we're going to go for here and we have a number to choose from. We're going to go with the pie here and the pie chart will give us this type of a look if we want to see well what would a donut look like very similar. We could go with a column type chart and we can feel free to play around. One of the other options we have is to take this report when we're done and clone it. So we could have the same type of data but displayed differently. Next we'll enter a chart title. This is different than the overall report type. The chart title is going to be, uh, it's going to appear in the white space above the chart so we know what this chart in this report is about. So I'll type in items by category for the chart title. Next for the X and Y axis, I'm going to select item category by item category count. And we're not going to put anything in for the range or any of the other labels. The last step is to save. Once we save and we come back to our report list, we'll see the shared reports owned by others but shared with us and then we'll see my reports. So in the my reports area we have the ability to run this report right now as an HTML. So we can run it and here it's showing us all of the items in our current workspace that are uh, of the latest version, the category, and then the count. This is good. We can send this off and print this off to uh, uh, paper or we can print it to PDF. Optionally we can run this report as Excel. So we can run it 
send it out to Excel for somebody who doesn't have access to the system but yet works with Excel. But the one that we're after here is to actually generate a nice pie chart report of this. Now instead of percentages, in this case we're after actual numbers, so we can come to the drop down and say numeric. Numeric will give us an idea, so off the shelf, fabricated, etc. Some of the options we have within here is to enable rotations if we want to get closer and start to see the divisions between the different types, we can do so. We can also right mouse click and select the slicing movement where we can choose on each piece of the chart and open it up. Now finally one of the other options we have is to enable rotation, move it around as a 2D and perhaps save this off as an image file for somebody else that might embed it into a presentation. So the last step, we'll take this items by category report that we made and we'll add it to our dashboard. To add to the dashboard, we'll go back to our main page or login page, take a look at my dashboard and click on the edit the pencil up here. We'll add items by category and now this will appear every time that we come to our dashboard and expand it. We'll see that items by category updated and it'll be coupled with all of the other report charts that we have on our dashboard.